Welcome back to Great Sound Lab. So that's your favorite place to dive into headphone technology. And I'm here with a luminary in the headphone world, Axel Gray. It's great to have you back, Axel. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everybody. It's good to be here again. So let's start. Yeah, exactly. So today's topic is uh, something that is very, very important to most headphone developers, but it's very rarely talked about in the community. And um, that is headphone openness. So most people are aware that there's closed headphones, which isolate you and open headphones, which really let sound through in both directions. And um, what most people don't know is that there's actually de different degrees of openness in open headphones, in other kinds as well, but especially in open headphones, the difference can be quite striking. So Axel, please explain to us what is uh, openness in simple terms. Yeah, so um, it's not simple. Okay. As always, <laughs> <laughs> but I try to say it as simple as possible. So uh, open headphone lets the sound energy that is not used to create uh, movements at the eardrum. Mm -hmm. And this is what it is used for mainly. Uh, you will hear something and all the energy that is still there in the system is just uh, causing... Uh, um, yeah, reflections and uh, yeah, so this is not needed. And so in a closed system, it just creates some heat in there, but in an open system, it can leave the system. Ah, yeah. And uh, so this is why a open type headphone is by principle better for great sound quality. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can create great close ones as well, but with uh, the result will always be better with the open one. Uh, the disadvantage of it is, as it is open, there is leakage for the lower frequencies, but that's a different story. Yeah. Okay, so you need some open area mm -hmm. and uh, you have, of course, the uh, mechanical parts. So, and you have reflections on these mechanical parts. You can imagine when you have a big surface and just some little hole in it, it's still open, but there are reflections to that ah, yeah. big uh, surface. And it's better when the open surface is large, but when it, this is too large, you don't have any base. Yeah. So uh, it could not be completely open. It needs to have some acoustical resistance. So mm. a big surface with a acoustical resistance that is still open and let the sound th pass through, but not fully pass through is uh, yeah, the optimum that I want to achieve with headphones. And when you look at headphones, uh, and, and how this develops from, uh, say, something like uh, HD 600 to HD 800, uh, which is a factor, yeah, more than two in surface, and from the HD 800 to the Grad OE ones, which is a factor of two again oh, wow. okay. in, in surface, open surface. So this is something, yeah, you get less reflections from these hard mechanical parts and there is more um, of this acoustical uh, resistant, resistant material that lets the uh, sound pass through, but yeah. not fully. Yeah. So, so, uh, so first, thank you for the great explanation. That, but to sort of uh, maybe, maybe put it together is that this material that, which lets sound through, but not fully, uh, it is really something that, that doesn't reflect back. So the reflection itself is really one of the worst things that can happen to openness. Um, but it, it really um, is a clearly defined material which, uh, which only offers sort of friction to sound. So, so that, that it's a bit absorbed to a certain degree, not fully because it's still audible at the outside. Um, but, but yeah, I think maybe that, uh, that is maybe a bit clearer. Um, yeah. Maybe yeah. one, one thought about that. Yeah. So uh, when you have something like yeah, tubes or something that behaves like a tube, mm -hmm. you have not only a reflection when it is completely closed. Yeah. Uh, you have a reflection as well when it is completely open. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, the impedance uh, is from this tube to the open surface. Uh, completely different and so you have a reflection from there as well. Oh. So it is important to have the right impedance at the opening to get no reflections. So that's another 
uh, thought about that. So to have the right impedance to get no reflections is important. Okay. Yeah. I mean, this really delves into a sort of engineering territory. So you need some background to understand what impedance is and so on. Yeah. But, but, uh, but okay, still, say, uh, say resistance in that case. So that yeah. makes it more simple to understand. But uh, yeah, in, in reality, it's, it's more complex. And what, what's the bad thing about the reflection is, so you can just take your hands and put them over your ears and you f hear something, but you feel something as well. Uh, so it gives you some, yeah, so it's, it's not this normal feeling of uh, I'm in a room and I behave in the room like that, but it's something where your brain reacts and your hearing apparatus reacts as well. So there are some little muscles contract and yeah, the hearing is completely detuned. Yeah. And this is what happens, by the way, with, open, uh, with closed headphones as well. So when you put a closed headphone on your ears, so the hearing is detuned. It's different to um, a good open one. Yeah. And uh, this is another aspect. And you can define the openness as well as uh, the sound that is reflected by the headphone when you put some, uh, say the eardrum is a sound source mm -hmm. and sends out some source, uh, some sound and you measure the reflections that are coming back to the eardrum. So, and this need to be a minimum. And this is, uh, so I'm working a project with the University of Hanover, Leibniz University, and they're working for a long time already on this uh, uh, reflected sound and so uh, the sound sent out by the ear and what is reflected. Uh, a guy called Roman Schlieper worked on that uh, and uh, um, there are some papers out from him. So if you're interested in that, read the papers. They are very interesting, but they're more for sci scientific interested uh, persons. So yeah. Yeah. But, but I mean, you could argue that the like Harman research was also mainly for scientific research and still like enthusiasts have taken so much interest in it. So I still think it's really great uh, to, to have a look at it or to reach out to Roman to set you the, the, the papers. So, uh, yeah, I, I can only support that. So my next question would be, because obviously it's a very important topic, but still you almost never see it in reviews. You certainly don't see it measured. So what would be the reason for that? It's openness. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it's not so easy to, to measure it. Really. <laughs> yeah, as I said, so you need, when you do these measurements as Roman Schlieper um, proposes to do it, uh, you need a, um, a tube with uh, some very, very similar microphones to send out the sound wave. You have a uh, silicon pinner on the end of it. You put a headphone on and you measure, okay, there's a sound wave going to the headphone, but there's another sound wave oh, coming yeah. back. And uh, the relation of these two sound waves to measure that you need to have very, very, very precise microphones. And uh, yeah, so that's, it's not that simple. Okay. It's um, difficult. One thing could be, okay, you just measure how much sound is, is coming out of the headphone. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more simple, but there are, until today, we don't have standards for it. So yeah. I think we should have standards for it, but we don't have it. Yet. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate, but, but uh, let, uh, like we don't have a standardized measurement equipment for that yet. There's probably like two or three people in the world that have something for that. Yeah. Um, so if you don't have any measurement equipment, how could you still get a feel for how a uh, headphone is? So let's say like an HG600 versus some other maybe more open headphone like an HG800. Is there something where you can just go by your gut feeling? This is what makes a difference. But when you put the headphone on your ears and uh, you are just listening to the room or yeah, how it feels, then you, this is one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that is more this thing called, I would say transparency in a way. Oh, yeah. uh, so it's scientific words is different, but okay. <laughs> and uh, the other thing is when you're just listening to music, you, you hear, uh, or yes, you feel that it's um, not this, you're not covered. Yeah. So, yeah, HD 600 is open already. Yeah. Um, so that is developing, as I said, from 602. But when you're going to closer ones, it, it's obvious that, yeah. and there are semi-opens 
and then you can really hear, oh yeah, that's different. Yeah, that's probably a good experiment to have a closed headphone, maybe semi-open the most, uh, I, I guess famous one is still the Biodynamic DT8080, yeah. right? Um, but And then like a good open one like the HG600 or HG800 even, if you just put on the headphones without any music, then you will still get a very distinct feel of how how much you still hear the the room and sort of how natural it feels. It's it's very very different. So I, I think that's a great experiment. Yeah. So uh, especially in the, the high frequencies, the semi open kind of a lot of, of of the very high frequencies. So the the lower the lower frequencies pass through, but the, the higher are cut out. Yeah. That's good for some yes settings, but in total, it's, I think, not the right way to go yeah. for an open one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so the next uh, question would be um, really to, going with this openness to the maximum. Um, so, so there are some concepts out there of a so-called ear speaker, in a sense. Um, so we know that Stax uses the term, but, but also it's often used for headphones that have no earpads at all, and the drivers just suspend it before the ears. Um, yeah. The AKG K1000 was yeah. the most famous example, of course. It is. It's a legendary headphone. Yeah. So I, um, my, in my first days at Sennheiser, so we had one that was in the early 90s. Mm -hmm. Or oh, we had three of them, and I run around it with that the whole day. The only disadvantage of it was there was really hard pressure here because the, the pads were really small yeah. and slim yeah. and hard. And so that was a little bit bad. But uh, sound-wise, in the high-frequency range, it was perfect. High mids, mids, but really no bass, mm -hmm. and that's the bad thing about it. Uh, when you have no ear pads, the ear pads uh, have two functions. It, it's not two. Yeah, it's not only one. It's uh, there are two functions. One thing is, of course, they, uh, the ear pads uh, with this uh, acoustic baffle and the driver are forming some kind of. Um, chamber yeah when it is open and dampened to the so with this uh, um, acoustical yeah resistances it is still open but there could be built in some pressure and when uh, this is completely open the, the uh, acoustical impedance of the driver is not matching to the acoustical impedance of, of the air in front of your ear and it just moves for the back it could not build up any sound pressure yeah and so it's then you don't hear bass so this is it in short you it's don't sort of like a free field loudspeaker only yeah. that it's not large enough to actually do bass yeah it is. <laughs> so and yeah this is one thing and the other thing is uh what the ear pad is doing uh so when you look at the the bass response so here's the bass here are the highs so it is like that and then you have an overswing uh, because you have, of course, a plate in a way, and you have a resonance between the plate, the plate that is built by the head, and the plate that is the, uh, the headphones, and uh, yeah, so you have some resonance there. Yep. And this is normally dampened by uh, the, the ear pads and and the acoustical damper on the acoustical baffle. But as you don't have it, yeah, there's no dampening of that. Yeah. So these are the two disadvantages. AKG solved this overswing thing, this resonance with the electrical circuit. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, but it still has no bass. So it's. But it was very inspiring for me. It's really yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I also think the concept itself is just very novel and, uh, as you said, inspiring. It's it's very different, and that makes it brilliant in a sense. And not every brilliant thing has to be mass market. <laughs> But, no. but it's still great to have different things in the world. But I still, uh, I, I gave mine away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, I would like to have one still. So let's see if I can get one on eBay or somewhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, so you just said there's no base in these open uh, open concepts, and uh, like. You you already talked about the OA1, which takes a completely different approach to, to balance, so it has a lot of space. Um, so how does it compare in terms of openness to an AG800, which is industry leading? So uh, d does it have the same amount of openness roughly, or is it better or worse? The openness is more or less the same. Mm -hmm. So in um, when you measure just the acoustical impedance, but as I said, uh, the the surface is wider. Yeah. 
or bigger. The rear is bigger, uh, larger, and um, and the um, specific impedance of the material then needs to be, of course, higher to to uh, result in the same. Uh, total resistance. Yeah. So the resistance is the same, uh, but the open area is two times bigger. Ah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and what I find, uh, uh, let's say, interesting about the OA1 is, is that if you look inside, so so into the the baffle, uh, and we can just show a picture of that, it looks sort of like a baby H H800. And I think it's quite cool to see this sort of um, very high end sound uh, design in a way, in a way brought down to a fairly accessible price point. So that is something that I think is quite admirable. Um, and I already thought that before joining the company. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, I think that um, that already concludes the episode. So we touched on a lot of topics and we went a bit overboard on some of them, um, but, but we have to keep the time somehow. So this is it for today. So if you have any topics in particular where you would like to get even more input, then uh, just put in the comments. Um, and as always, give us recommendations on how to improve. And uh, yeah, look on the YouTube channel on our first episode, which was already uh, quite interesting. Um, yeah, any words from you? Thank you for dialing in. And uh, yeah, so great. would be great to see you again next time when we're talking about our next topic. See you then. Yeah, see you then. It will be very soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>